Please continue to honor those who try to make a difference, those who have made a difference, and those working hard to save the world. You had a wonderful event tonight, and I'd just like to understand what it took to put an event like this together. It took many, many volunteers many, many times, and like I said, I just got to stand up and um, announce everybody, and really there was many people behind this that did much more work, I believe, than I did. Brad Collette um, organized this. He had a great group of people that came together. We have a director of awards. We have a director of, of scholarships. We have a director of sponsorships. And we have PR. So it's an entire board and entire organization. We have quite a few volunteers. So it, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of man hours. But it's certainly worth it. And uh, I love the fact that they make us look good. But reading Paul Hawkins' book 15 years ago, I asked myself then, and I ask you now, how would a living planet, the rarest, the most precious thing in the universe, lose its biosphere? I'm here with Lori Kuna. So what did you think of uh, Ray Anderson's speech today? I thought it was wonderful. It's nice to see somebody that has gone through and had a revelation and they're willing to share it with others. And he's made a big change in his entire business philosophy because of what he experienced. Now, now he's got a message, it seems, that... that a lot of people can understand. Do you think that he reaches the masses? I think his talk was very good. I do think it will inspire other people. I mean, the people that inspired him, he mentioned E.O. Wilson, um, he mentioned The Ecology of Commerce. Those are some of my favorite books. And so obviously they've influenced him, and I think he will influence others. Well, I think Ray Anderson kind of brings it down to a higher level. You know, I think we hear a lot about the economics of why we want to do environmental things, but I think there's higher and more intrinsic values that we need to consider as to why we want to stay in balance with the environment. So um, at, in terms of Ray Anderson's speech specifically, can you pick one part that, that moved you or that had a, an emotional effect on you? Um, I think when he kind of considered, you know, it's going to be an incremental change to the worst, you know, one river at a time, one smokestack at a time. I think, you know, if you just mentioned a couple of things that probably wouldn't have resonated with me as much, but as he went on and on and on and just kind of indicated all these very small, seemingly minor things and how they kind of all add up and make pretty huge adverse impacts into the environment. I think that kind of hit me. You know, that's, that's really what it's all about is all these minor decisions we make one, one at a time. Now, USGBC here in Central Florida started in 1994 with a very small group of 10 or 13, I understand. What do you think USGBC Central Florida's impact has been on the region? On the region, I would say that it's, um, it's been a quick growing impact. I think that USGBC National has really helped us, but I think there's a lot of volunteers that have jumped on the bandwagon. And I think we've pretty much changed the face. I think we've made an establishment. There's a lot of players out there, AIA, BOMA, NAOP, that have, ASHRAE, that have been much more well established. And I think we've just come into our own and come into the running to be able to be a good player to contribute to make partnerships. In the early 70s, we were the architects for a project right down here, downtown in Orlando, that was an environmentally sensitive building from the standpoint of it saving a lot of energy in its design and, and the operation of the facility. But since that time, our architectural practice has been very varied we have practiced the way we're supposed to practice as architects, taking advantage of sunlight and orientation of buildings and insulation design of the building shell. But it isn't until probably about five years ago that we really started to focus on sustainable design. That we're the only firm in the state of Florida that has a lead gold new construction building to their credit that they own and operate. And that's a marketable asset, we believe. So the opportunity now is, or the, the charge really now, is to bring people to our building and get them introduced to what a, a real lead gold building is all about from an architectural and interior design perspective. It's exciting. But I wanted to also understand what your feeling was about the award winners. What were you most proud of in, of in each of the cases? I think I was most proud of the fact that there was so many certified projects in the area in such a quick time and that the projects really were of high caliber. It was very, very difficult for the jurors to get through it and to judge it. I found out that there was sometimes just a point difference 
in yes it was close very close and so it was very exciting they wanted to expand the categories just because we had so many good candidates they just couldn't not reward as many people as possible so it was just exciting to the, see that explosion and that um, ability to provide really solid lead projects. Wyndham has a green council and we've been um, organized for well over, this is our second year, and we had an opportunity where we were building out another floor in a building that we already occupy. Our landlord decided that any new building they were going to build was going to be green certified. So it was one of those things where all of a sudden uh, everybody was talking about it and it unfolded in this very magical way. Why did USGBC think that it was important to get involved with the Central Florida Energy Efficiency Alliance, SOFIA? The USGBC, along with a couple of other professional associations that have a, they're really stakeholders in the green, thought it's absolutely critical to be a part of the Central Florida Energy Efficiency Alliance. We've got BOMA, IFMA, Net Impact Orlando, USGBC, AIA, we've got OUC, Progress Energy, uh, UCF, the Orange County, and the City of Orlando, who are all a part of this organization. And it, it's not a new organization, because there's already so many organizations with a stake in green. This particular organization is its an alliance, because we need a platform that all of us can be a part of. What we've seen is that when people begin to benchmark their buildings and they know what their score is, that's when they begin to measure and then they begin to improve. That said, also on the Energy Star website, there's all sorts of tips and encouragement and ideas for how to reduce your energy consumption without a whole lot of outlay. Now you've had the awards dinner, and I know that's really important, but what are your goals going forward? We have quite a few goals. We do want to partner more with more um, organizations. We do want to be able to offer more services. We do have a legacy team. We offer free lead services to a worthy cause every couple of years because it takes about a couple of years to go through a project. Uh, we also, um, I think an, one, another one of our goals is to grow even more. We've had such an explosion recently. We have new committees um, every day. We have a great website and we're being, we're at the point where we can disseminate information, where we have enough people to be able to uh, cover events, to create the partnerships. Um, I think our goal is just to proliferate more of that and to get more people involved and let them know that they, they can change the world.